most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. And I'm Brad Heinick, physical Together therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Brad, today we're going to talk about what is causing your shoulder pain. You're getting this shoulder pain, you're upset about it. We're going to show you some tests you can try on your own. Right, this is to yourself, a little self-assessment here. You know, eventually you're going to probably need to see the doctor, but um, this maybe gives you a little leeway into, leadway into it so that you can say to your doctor, I wonder if it's this. Right. They love that, don't they, Brad? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Another one of those patients. All right, we have 10, and uh, most important is number seven, so you better stick around till number seven. Right, because it's, in our opinion, the most common. All right, number one is a radiculopathy. What does that mean, Brad? Bob, these big words. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, means that you're getting some pain down your arm from your neck, probably a pinched nerve in your neck. Sure. And one of the easy tests you can do for that, first off, you may get numbness and tingling. These are some of the symptoms all you're All the way get. down into the fingers. Especially if it goes all the way down to the fingers, that's when you're starting to think that it might be th this sort of thing. Right. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn your neck th to the side that you're having pain, turn and extend, and then you're gonna push down. Right. It'd be better if somebody else would actually do it. Right. So I turn, extend, and then push down, right. gently. Now, if that recreates your symptoms, that means you're pinching that nerve, mm -hmm. and, and that means you could possibly have a problem with your neck that's giving you shoulder pain. Right, and then you better probably go in and have it looked at for sure. Yeah, um, you can do the other side too, rotate, extend, and then push down. And it doesn't take much pressure, and if this is it, it usually triggers it, it's pretty clear. It's like, oh yeah. wow, it's getting worse. Not good, nerve pain hurts. <laughs> yeah. nerve, nerve pain is some of the worst pain you're gonna get. Uh, second one is thoracic outlet syndrome. And in this case, you're getting some pinching up here in the neck, in the shoulder, in here, some of the muscles, or maybe over the first rib, right. somewhere in here. Simple test, it's called Roos test, R-O-O-S. Mm -hmm. You're gonna bring your arms up, 90 degrees here, 90 at the elbow, yep. Stop and usually bring it back a little yep, bit too, Brad. Back this way. Yep, yep. back. And then you're gonna just. Da, 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 oh, Bob. Da, 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 da. There's people that don't really the know what dance. they're talking about. The chicken dance. Yeah. You know this song, right? Anyway, I've seen different amounts. You know, it's, what you're looking is to see if it starts recreating your symptoms. Right. Um, they say to do it, some say to do it up for three minutes. You know, some say a couple minutes. I'm thinking three minutes is gonna get anybody's Yeah, answer. I was gonna say. <laughs> So, you know, if they start showing up after about 20 seconds to a minute, I think you, there's a good possibility that that's playing a role. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Number three, rotator cuff tear. Okay. A rotator cuff. Could even be a um, the rotator cuff t uh, tendonitis or, sure. or kind of a uh, injury of the, the muscles of the right. uh, rotator cuff too. I, I just want to say one thing on this. If you try to lift your shoulder and you're going like this, this is all the higher you can get it. Yeah. That's making me think, maybe Rotator it's a tear, tear yeah. you know. Um, by the way, Brad, if you haven't already, um, if you're new to our channel, please take a second just to subscribe. We got a button oh, yeah, right over here. Right there. He was wondering where I was pointing at him. <laughs> uh, and we provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Right, so, so there's a variety. Lot, lot of, you know, head to toe we work. All right, next one. So we're talking about the rotator cuff tear, Brad. Uh, and there's a couple ways to test that. Sure. Because there's two, there's, the rotator cuff is four muscles. So we want to make sure we're testing them uh, to see what their strength right. is like. You actually tore the tendon of the muscle, mm -hmm. not the muscle. You tore the tendon. And one of the ways to test that is if you're facing there, Brad, you're going to bring the arm uh, out to the a little bit forward, right. about 30 degrees, up about 80 degrees, and then you're going to turn the thumb down. Right. And you're just going to give a little push here. Now, it, if it's if it's tore, it's going to just give yeah. way. It's probably going to be... You may not even be able to you get may it not even be able to, Yeah, you may not even be able to put it up in this position. Right, or it's painful there. You can test yourself like that. Now, a lot of these rotator cuff muscles, they take some experience, but you can, you can try them here and, and get a feel. Right. The other one is you could test the uh, infraspinatus and the teres minor, and I'm just saying that to impress you. You put your hands like this, <laughs> yep. and you can actually put both of them like this, Brad, sure. and I can push them both in. Right. And if one gives way, you know... That might right. be a sign that you have a, 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 this, a tear. This one I see a lot in the clinic. I'll do this, or you could do it on yourself. If you can pull here and that one's strong, and this one is like, oh, it hurts and it goes right in. Yeah. It's a pretty good sign something's going on in that rotator cuff. Osteoarthritis or just plain old arthritis of the shoulder. Now, mm -hmm. generally, this is going to be people that are older. I right. mean, it tends, it tends to be. Mm -hmm. And if it, it's catching or clicking, you know, grinding, 
that's kind of a sign. Right. Generally with osteoarthritis, you start to lose motion in the shoulder too, especially ex external rotation, Brad. Sure. So if you kind of put your arms like this and like this one can go way back here and this one only can go this far. Right. Now I'm rotating, I'm keeping the arm at a, a right angle, the elbow. Yep, right there. And all the, ro you know, it's rotating like this. So if this one, you know, only goes this far, but this one goes all the way there, could be a sign of, of a little bit of arthritis right. in there. That's the nice thing with all these tests is you got two shoulders. Uh, if they were both reasonably healthy before the injury, you test from one to the other and say, I'm not sure if that's a, you know, that's a good sign or bad sign. Test the good shoulder and see what happens on you that You certainly side. could get arthritis in both shoulders, though, couldn't you? Right, Tom? yeah, that is uh, one deal. Okay, a, clomio, a chromioclavicular joint. That's the AC joint. That's this joint right here. If you look at the collarbone as it goes along and right it, as it attaches to this other bone, um, should we go a little closer, Brad? Sure. Lonnie says stay oh. away from her. Okay, going along the bone, right as it attaches to this right other bone, there. that's the joint right here. Yep, very common injury there if you fall on it, fall on your elbow. Uh, a lot of football players have injuries in here. Well, that, or if you fall on the point of your shoulder. Yep, uh, um, exactly. Weightlifters get this, Brad, a lot. A lot of people do heavy bench press. Okay. Get this. this is yep. very common in those. They wear out the end of their clavicle. Very easy tests you can do. Uh, one, let's do the most simple one. You can just bring your arm across like this and pull it across like this. I call it the crossover test. Po yeah, point pain right here. That would, could be the uh, chromioclavicular. It could be other things too, but right. you know, we're just giving you a couple tests to do. Another one, put your hand here, and now you're gonna push up like this. Yep, that'd be another one that could bring it on. The other last one is a pull apart test. You're gonna pull, pull your arms apart. Yep. And, and I actually feel that a little bit on this one. So you're gonna, one shoulder will be painful, or yeah, the, right. the problem will be. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little bit positive on here. Sure. I got just a slight AC. Which is there. a good point, Bob. You may be positive on some of these tests, and it may not be a positive, problem. Positive means that it's, you actually found a result. It's not, right. positive is not good. <laughs> right. So, uh, bursitis number six. Uh, kind of a tough one to test for, isn't it, Brad? It tends yeah. to be very localized yep. pain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not spreading out, going down. The, you know, it's, the bursa is a fluid-filled sac here. So you might have a little inflammation here even. Mm -hmm. It might feel warm. It might even be swollen. Yep. And you can push on it. I used to test it, Brad, kind of bringing the arm back like that. That exposes the bursa yep. a little bit. And yeah. then I, I, you know, I, I press on it yeah. and tender. And again, you could have tendonitis, bursitis. Right. They can they present similar. You so. could have both. Right. Very very common to have exactly. both actually. So, uh, impingement. Now this is number seven. This is the one that's the most important because the big one. We see this the most often by mm -hmm. far. Yeah. And, and basically, what's happening is your shoulder is t you know forward a little bit, and it's pinching on the tendons in there. Right. Which can lead to tendonitis, mm -hmm. which can lead to a rotator cuff tear. Sure. So this is the one, you know, that, you know, by the way, I'll have to link up maybe one of our videos on how to treat impingement. Sure. Because this, if I were to take a guess, if you're having shoulder pain, this probably is playing a role. Sure. I mean, yeah. uh, um, so one, just one simple test that you can do on your own is you put the arm here again, but this time just bring the elbow up like this. Yeah. And if that hurts and gives you a little bit of pinching. So you're lifting with the other arm. Yep. Keep this in. one planted on there. Yep. So you're getting the acromium and the humerus to come in and pinch, and that's where it gets the name impingement because yeah, you're, you're internally rotating, so it's it's pinching those tendons and right. So, so that's no again the most important one. Number eight, uh, which leads to tendonitis, which we talk, you know, this can lead to tendonitis, the impingement. Yep. So usually what we see with this, Brad, is like a painful arc. We call it right. See so, this a lot. Yeah. So like here, from here to here, it doesn't hurt. But you know, from here to here, ow, ow, because it's pinching and it's, it's pinching on that tendon. Right, and, and sometimes it's kind of interesting where here to here it's fine and then, ow, oh, it hurts, and then they get through that and then up here it's fine again. Right, because the tendon clears. Right. It, 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 that part of the tendon that is, is, has the tendonitis actually clears. That's a really good sign of tendonitis is if it hurts in a painful arc and then doesn't. Right. It's probably one of the few things that does that, wouldn't you think, Brad? Yeah, it's kind of interesting, but we don't want to get into the mechanics of it now, but you know, right. maybe we'll have another video. Number nine, if you have an unstable shoulder. Now, if you, if you tend to have be double jointed mm -hmm. in other joints, like let's like say you can take your thumb and put it down to your forearm. Yep. Um, elbows hyperextended. Yeah, your, your elbows are hyperextended or your knees are hyperextended. 
there's a good chance that you might have an unstable shoulder because that means your shoulder's not stable either. And you know, we do the apprehensive test, which not a really easy one to do on your own probably, but you know, we bring it like this and we go like this. So if I do it on Brad and I would push it this Ooh. way, he gets apprehensive about it because he's worried it's gonna even pop out of the right. joint. Yeah, so in other words, there's no pain, but it's like you're just yeah. really afraid it's gonna yeah, go. This, you don't like it being up in this position. Right. So um, you can have an unstable shoulder without that being a problem, but it, you know, it's moving around too much. It's right. sloshing around and giving you problems. Number 10 is uh, fibromyalgia. Difficult one to diagnose. Even doctors mm -hmm. have trouble diagnosing this. Yep, there's really often go kind of go by symptoms. You know, are you tired? Do you have a lot of trigger points? That's right. probably the main thing. So right, they have Brent? specific ones mapped out for people that are consistent with fibromyalgia. Uh, we're not going to get into that. It's something that you know may be. It could part be a possibility, right? Mm -hmm. If you're having pain in other areas besides your shoulder, that's that's something to, to right. think about. So. Uh, we hope that was helpful, and uh, remember, Brad and I can fix just about anything. Except that broken heart. I like right. the way you make that come in, Bob, yeah. in the video. I think I'm going to put it over your head, this face this <laughs> yeah, time, so that. we can't see right it. Right there, I'll open it up. All right, thanks for watching.